Hey guys, I just got back from a long trip from Austin, Texas to New York and then back here. So I'm kind of run down today and I have a lot of work to do, but I promised I would post a video here every other Wednesday. So here we go. Let's talk about the nudge function in Pro Tools. So first of all, what is the nudge function in Pro Tools? Basically, the nudge function makes it so that you can use keyboard shortcuts to shift the location for something along your timeline, and it makes it so you can do this when preset amounts. So let me show you what this looks like before we get into the details of it. So you can see here that I'm using the nudge function to shift this clip back and forth. This is just one example of how you can use the nudge function. Now, I mentioned that you can nudge by preset amounts along the timeline. In Pro Tools, how big this incremental amount is is called your nudge value. If you're familiar with setting the grid size and grid values in Pro Tools, you'll notice some similarities with how you set the nudge value. Anyway, when we nudge a clip in Pro Tools, the clipper audio will move in a similar way to how a clip moves within the relative grid mode, in the sense that the clip will shift incrementally by predefined units. But nudging is a function that we can use within any of our editing modes, so the shuffle, slip, spot, or the grid modes. However, this might seem obvious to some of you, but most engineers tend to use the nudge function in slip, shuffle, or grid mode. And that's because in spot mode, you're manually entering the location for the clip you're moving. So if you're entering spot mode, you probably already know where you want the clip to move to in a very specific way, and you won't be using something like the nudge mode as much. Also, in order to use it in spot mode, you have to make your selection before entering spot mode. Otherwise, you'll get the spot dialog as soon as you click to make your selection. Another thing that's important to notice is that when you're using the nudge function to move clips, this will never cause adjacent clips to move, no matter what editing mode you're in. So, for example, if you're in shuffle mode and you move a clip, you expect adjacent clips to move. But if you're in shuffle mode and moving clips with the nudge function, the adjacent clips won't move. So knowing that fact can make you more efficient and save you some time in the studio. Okay, so let's go into how to configure your nudge function. We mentioned the nudge value, and usually that's the first thing that I configure before using the nudge function. When you're configuring this, you want to keep in mind that you're setting both the unit of measurement for the nudge value and the nudge value itself. So, when we are setting the nudge value, we first want to open up what's officially called the nudge value pop-up menu using the nudge value pop-up selector. You'll find this pop-up selector in the edit window toolbar, and it's the little arrow that's just to the right of where it says nudge. You can see that when we click on that little triangle, it opens up the pop-up menu. You should also note here that the unit of measurement for the nudge value can be bars and beats, minutes and seconds, which goes down to milliseconds, time code, feet and frames, or samples. So first, select which time scale you want to use as your unit of measurement by clicking on whichever one you'd like. Here I'm going to select bars and beats, but you can pick whichever one makes sense for you. You'll notice that when you make your selection for unit of measurement that the pop-up menu then closes. So next you're going to click on the nudge value pop-up selector once again and select your nudge value. If you experiment with this, you'll notice that, logically, what options you have for nudge value will depend entirely on which unit of measurement you just selected for your nudge time scale. If you're familiar with the grid value selector, you might also notice that there's a follow main time scale option with the nudge value pop-up menu, just like with the grid value selector. And just like with the grid value selector, this option in the nudge value pop-up menu will make it so that the nudge value unit of measurement will automatically adjust to match whatever unit of measurement is currently the main time scale. So obviously, if you want the nudge value to remain constant, then don't enable this option. If the follow main time scale option is enabled, then you can tell because there will be a little check mark next to it. If there isn't a check mark to the left of where it says follow main time scale, then the option isn't enabled and the nudge value won't change in tandem with the main time scale. I'm just going to switch into minutes and seconds really quickly because I have one more thing to notice before we move on to how to use the nudge function. And that is that you can also sometimes manually enter the nudge value by typing into the nudge value display, which is next to the nudge value pop-up selector. Okay, so now that we all know exactly how to set our nudge value and nudge unit of measurement, let's move into actually nudging clips. In Pro Tools, you have the option of nudging one clip or multiple clips at a time. In order to nudge a clip or clips, you first need to make sure you set your nudge value and time scale like we just did, and then you can use your grabber tool to select the clip or multiple clips you want to nudge. And then we are just going to nudge these clips using a keyboard shortcut. 
So press the plus key on the numeric keypad to move the clip or clips back in time, so later on the timeline, to the right, or press the minus key on your numeric keypad to move the clips forward in time, so sooner or earlier on the timeline, to the left. Each time you press the plus or minus on the numeric keypad, you should notice that the clips will move by one nudge value. And one thing to note here is that I'm using my laptop, so I don't have a numeric keypad on my keyboard, but this is one of the many Pro Tools features that makes the numeric keypad so important and handy to have. But depending on your settings, if you don't have a numeric keypad, there's an easy way to do this. You can make sure you're in keyboard command focus mode by making sure the little keyboard command focus button is orange, and then hit the comma and period keys to perform a nudge, with the comma key nudging your clip earlier in time towards the left on the time timeline, and the period key nudging your clip later in time towards the right along the timeline. Okay, so that's the basics of nudging clips, but you can also nudge selections. And we do this in the same way we nudge clips. So first make your selection over any track or multiple tracks that doesn't encompass an entire clip. Then you can just use your shortcut, so either the minus or plus key on your numeric keypad or the comma and period keys, to nudge your selection in the same way that you nudge your clip or clips. And you'll notice that your selection will nudge incrementally along the timeline by the same amount as your nudge value each time you press one of your shortcut keys. If you're trying to nudge a selection that is over a track or multiple tracks that does include one or more entire clips, then in order to nudge just the selection and not the underlying clips, you'll have to hold the shift key while pressing the plus or minus on the numeric keypad. When you make a selection over one or more entire clips and then nudge that selection, the default is for this nudging function to move the underlying clips along with the selection. Holding shift while nudging a selection like this, however, will make it so that nudging your selection doesn't affect any underlying clips. So that's it for today. I hope you guys liked this video and for today's question, I wanna know what's one thing that you struggle with while mixing? Please leave your answers in the comments below. Also, if you like this video, please hit the little like button, share the video, or subscribe to my channel. I'll be coming out with new videos every other Wednesday and thanks for watching. Okay.